welcome back to another video don't forget to subscribe and also turn on the bell icon to receive notifications every time we upload new videos fighting has continued in the democratic republic of congo up to now between the m23 rebels and the FRDC congolese soldiers and different militias who joined the FRDC soldiers to fight against the m23 today m23 came out and those on twitter and uh, talked about the more weapons they got from the their enemies m23 they said that in the fear of the fdrl FRDC, mercenaries and different militias who decided to fight against us have continued to fear. In the fighting that occurred between the M23 and the FDRL and the Wazalendo group, they got scared, they decided to run away from the battlefield, even forgetting their own weapons, which is an advantage to the M23 to use their enemies' weapons on them. M23 has posted today the uh, images of the weapons that they captured from uh, uh, these enemies of theirs if the real if how they say and they said that for them as m23 they are going to continue capturing more places protect civilians and protect their properties m23 resumed fighting in the democratic republic of congo in 2021 after years of silence they got up their guns again and started fighting in 2021 up to today though they accepted to negotiate with the government of the democratic republic of congo with president felix shekedi but President Felix Shekedi refused. He said he cannot negotiate with the, the rebels, the M23 rebels. But he accepted to work with the FDR rebels, Maimai, Nyatula, and different wagon machineries from uh, different areas. And he decided to collaborate with them to fight against the M23. Fighting has continued up to death. Very many people have been dying. Very many people have been displaced. Very many people, young children, women, they no longer get necessities. They no longer uh, get what they need to survive in this world. Something that is dangerous to humans. President Ifele Shekedi, who is now a presidential candidate, expecting to be added another term in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Few Congolese men and women still believe in him. They still have hope that he can change their country. However, another number of Congolese doubt because he has failed to solve the problem in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. How will he manage to uh, lead the country to protect civilians in the next five years if given another term in office? Thank you so much for watching. Peace. Is that welcome the resumption of talks between the Sudan Armed Forces and the paramilitary rapid support forces in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. One Sudanese woman activist says she is hopeful that the two warring parties will reach an agreement to end the war and restore stability across the country. Michael Atit reports for VOA from Juba. Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Foreign Affairs issued a statement Thursday welcoming Sudan's two rival groups for talks in Jeddah after months of suspension. A statement from the ministry states, quote, The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia welcomes the resumption of talks between the warring sides. The statement also called on the negotiators to abide by an earlier agreement announced on May 11th for the protection of civilians and a short-term ceasefire deal signed on May 20th. The statement further said, quote, the kingdom affirms its keenness on unity of ranks to stop the bloodshed and alleviate the suffering of the Sudanese people. End quote. Both the Sudan Armed Forces and the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces accepted the invitation to resume negotiations in Jeddah. The Sudan Armed Forces announced on its official X or Twitter account that its representatives are already in Jeddah to participate in the expected talks. The Rapid Support Forces also stated their readiness to participate in the Jeddah talks. 
Suad Musa, a resident of Kasala town of eastern Sudan, says both the Sudan Armed Forces and the RSF have no other choice but to sit down and address the root causes of the conflict. There is no other choice, and I believe this is the only peaceful way to engage the two warring parties since they have the upper hand in the country at the moment. They need to realize that there are other who also need to live in Sudan. Sudanese activist Asad Atahir, who resides in the Ugandan capital Kampala, says he also welcomes the resumption of talks in Jeddah. I expect that the mediators will present some solutions to both sides after they go through the stance of the two sides. But the most important and urgent at the moment is to reach a humanitarian agreement to safeguard the arrival of humanitarian aid to all the needy in Sudan. Sudanese writer Meki Al-Maghribi says negotiations is the only suitable way to end Sudan's conflict. Al-Maghribi told VOA that there is a need for the two sides to recommit to a ceasefire and allow humanitarian access. Peace talks uh, highly recommended between army and RSF political powers. Uh, gender forum, the efforts of uh, United States of America, Saudi Arabia are based on a clear humanitarian declaration. That is good. Representatives of the African Union and the East Africa Blog Intergovernmental Authority on Development, or EGAT, are expected to attend the Jeddah talks. According to the United Nations, more than 9,000 people have been killed, while some 5.6 million people have been displaced.